now. Hey, welcome to the 37th episode of season two of uh, First Day Copites podcast. Uh, this is a podcast for uh, friends of Liverpool fans in Delaware and Liverpool fans in Delaware. And today we're really excited because we're joined by Lou Vogel from Philadelphia, which for those of you who were maybe slightly geographically challenged is actually really in our backyard. It's like less than uh, 30 miles um, up the I-95 to Philly. So excited to have Lou to join us today. Thank you. No problem. Happy to be here. So we are going, and, and, and uh, if you've listened to our uh, regular episodes, you'll know when we have someone from a supporters club elsewhere, we talk about the supporters club and kind of memories. But today, it's April 16th, 2021. Um, Liverpool were moments away from having their Champions League dreams dashed. And then just the most Liverpool scenario happens um, with uh, Alison Becker um, scoring a header uh, and uh, to, to, to win the game in virtually the last kick. Um, but, but, but a header that looked like somebody who was used to scoring headers um, from corners. Um, so we're going to start with that because that, that's just the maddest moment. I've heard people describe this as possibly... Well, so Michael Cox, I think, Sean, you shared this with me, described it as the highlight of the season. And some moron tried to claim the season wasn't that bad. Um, and he firmly put him in his place. Um, so, highlight of the season. Yes or no? And if it's a no, why not? Lou, as our guest, we'll start with you. I mean, it has to be certainly be the highlight of the season yeah. to date. Uh, you know, the, the, ma the match itself yeah. was almost the season in a microcosm. Uh, one that we go into with high hopes, knowing that we're in control if we get a result. Uh, and much like the rest of the season in which we've constantly tripped over our own feet, uh, for lack of a better term, it looked like we were going to go get, uh, you know, Big Sam by Big Sam on his way out of the Premier League. Uh, you know, a 1-1 a draw at the Hawthorns against a relegated West Brom with nothing to play for would have been, you know, one, fatal for the season, two, just devastating for the rest of us emotionally. Uh, and then as you're at the death, Allison comes in on the rescue. You know, I, everyone says, oh, send the goalkeeper forward. And you think nothing of it because it never comes to fruition. Well, today it did. And, you know, you, you have to just be so happy for Allison, who professionally has probably had the most difficult season of his life. Uh, his performance has certainly not been up to par and certainly not consistent with what he has done for us the last few seasons. And when you look at it on the personal level, with the loss of his father, compounded by the yes buddy compounded by the fact that um you know he couldn't even attend services he couldn't be with his family because of covid protocols um you know to have him be the hero in that moment uh to save the season for now assuming that we can avoid tripping on our feet the last two matches i said it before we went on live um you know it's not a match day unless you experience every single emotion. Uh, it's just the order in which those emotions occur that varies and kind of impacts the way the rest of the week feels. Uh, and it was just unbelievable for Euphoria to be the last emotion today. Uh, and hopefully that's the way that the season ends uh, yeah. because I think a top four finish in the context of everything that's occurred, um, you, have to, you have to consider that a success. Yeah, yeah. But on this podcast, we have had various people who are on a lot and we've written it off, each of us in our own terms, um, and not expecting, I think, for us to be uh, top four. Um, Sean, I, 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 I should have mentioned we have extra guests on today, right? We have Lou's uh, two-year-old son um, and uh, as well. <laughs> What's his name again? His name is James. He's doing his best to drop in a little bit of witty banter here. And there oh, good, while, yeah. While, while playing with his uh, drum set that his godfather thought was an appropriate gift to give him uh, and, and his Mickey Mouse cash register. So my apologies for any sounds you might hear in the background. I should tell you Sean's uh, daughters have appeared on a couple of podcasts. So uh, Yeah, yeah. And actually, I, I was really hoping I could get to the pub today and um, my daughter's been sick all week. So, you know, the it, it's always, it always seems to be the last few years, it's hard for me to get out, but you, know, you gotta do what you gotta do, but um no, yeah, I, I, I was uh, <laughs> like they, 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 this team keeps sort of hugging at your heart, you know. Um, I was, I was sort of after the win midweek, um, I was sort of all bought in, um, 
I didn't think today's match was going to be easy, but I thought that, uh, you know, we'd, we'd be able to relatively comfortably pull it out and, uh, and it didn't turn out that way at all. Um, I was uh, in a pretty bad mood by the end of the match because my mood just, just started declining and, and kept declining all the way up until about the 90th minute. Um, feeling like, you know, we basically thrown the season away. Um, and then that happens and you're just like, wow. You know, up, and, and, up until about the 92nd minute, I kept saying to the people around me, we got this. We're, we're going to score the winner. <laughs> and then when Jeannie put one over the bar, I said, all right, we're, uh, you know, we're aft. Yeah. This, this is over. I, I felt like that up until about the 70th or 75th minute. And then I started feeling like, you know, I've seen this too many times before this year. Yeah. Um, and it just looked like we were kind of out of ideas and not finishing. And yeah, then, uh, yeah, that, I mean, and that's 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 one of the, one of the most memorable moments of any season that I can remember. Honestly, you know that that's, that was just unbelievable. I've never seen that happen before. I've never seen a goalie score in a match, you know, in a competitive match that I've watched. So I yeah. I can recall it happening in the championship. I think actually on um, playoff the playoff at Wembley, either in the championship or League One. But while I was driving back from uh, our pub today, I was listening to Talk Sport on the radio, and they actually said in Liverpool's hundred and what is it, 28, 29 year history at this point, um, this is the first time a Liverpool keeper has ever scored a goal in a competitive match. Wow. So Allison did say on the interview, he said it was the best goal he'd ever scored. I wasn't sure whether he, he'd ever scored another goal, but uh, it seemed appropriate. Um, so so uh, we talked earlier about the fact that uh, both our supporters clubs um, that we belong to had their first significant event since last March. Um, so it, it seemed uh, like especially just mad that, that, that on this day it would be like the most, a finish you really couldn't have scripted, right? With uh, goalkeeper scoring. Um, I do, I do want to do one last um, review of this because I, I find it hard to let it go. But I, I did hear Phil Blundell on the Anfield Raps uh, uh, post, uh, post-match pint, and he was apologising to Jurgen Klopp for calling him names for waving Allison forward in the new Camp when we were 3-0 down, um, and he was trying to score, and Phil was man enough to acknowledge that uh, that maybe you know Jurgen knew something that we didn't. Um, but... So maybe there's more of these goals to come. So, so um, where I'd like to go, go in terms of the game is, um, I, I actually thought there were some really, I, di- I didn't feel like they gave up like they may have done in some games earlier this season. And I did feel like there were some really good performances um, it, that, are, that are worth calling out apart from um, Allison, who, you know, just what else can you say about him? So I'm going to guy- I, I thought today uh, Trent was very good. And the way this season has been is, you know, the way, as Trent goes, we go. When Trent has a, a big performance, mm-hmm. we tend to get a result. When Trent is out of ideas, when his crosses are lazy, when they don't have venom on them, um, we tend to really struggle. I thought Trent had a great game. Uh, the most important uh, sequence for him all match was when he stopped, uh, I guess it was Robson Canoe from getting a second. Yeah. Um, I thought Tiago was exceptional. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it took him a little while to get into the match, uh, but maybe in about the 20th minute, really right after uh, West Brom scored their goal, Tiago became very assertive. Uh, I thought that he had a really big tackle late in the game uh, to win the ball back, just showing that they hadn't given up yet. Um, I thought Fabinho played well. Uh, I thought Mo was dangerous. I think Sadio was poor. Uh, Bobby was okay. But I think in terms of, you know, people that had big performances, Allison aside, uh, it's got to be Trent, Tiago, and probably Fabinho. Yeah. yeah. There, there was someone also, I mean, the pub today who kept saying, Trent's a terrible defender. This was, he was they were joking, by the way, because that's <laughs> the, the shtick, right? Like he comes back and covers off, like terrible defender. Um, yeah, I, I think Reese Williams was just trying to make sure it was either Reese or Nat or both. 
I think they were just trying to make sure that uh, Trent got his England call for the Euros. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, so uh, I'll go to you next, um, Sean, just a kind of pluses and minuses. Uh, one thing I would say about Reese Williams is two years ago, he's playing the FA Youth Cup final. Yeah. Um, and lo and behold, we're in the FA Youth Cup final again um, in the next, I don't know, whatever that is, next couple of weeks. Uh, but uh, I, so I, I think he deserves some latitude is what I would say. I agree with that. Um, you know, Jurgen Klopp went to Old Trafford in a must-win game and won with Nat Phillips and Reese Williams at the back. <laughs> yeah. 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 For anyone that ever wants to say a negative word about him. Yeah. It, it is yeah, it, it, there's lots of bizarre things. The, the guy who scored hadn't started a game for West Brom for like, was it 18 months? Yeah. Bizarre. Uh, I, I've only ever really seen him turn up in a Wales shirt. Yeah. I, you know, didn't he play for Swansea for a while as well? I, I do know he scored the goal of the Euros, uh, like whenever that was, the last one in 2016. Um, didn't he win some award? But, yeah, yeah. He, scored an ex he scored an exceptional goal for Wales. Because... Mm -hmm. Didn't Wales go to the semifinals? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. If we were talking about Wales, I'd have my my dragon house here just to uh, talk about that. But uh, Sean, <laughs> West Bromwich Albion, <sighs> beating Sam Allardyce, that feels good. Yeah, I mean, I would I would echo a lot of what Lou said. I thought Trent and Tiago were just world class today. I mean, you can't really ask for better performances. Um, from right back or center midfield than those two gave today. Um, I, I, you know, it, it was a weird, it was a weird game of scored the winner. I feel like we definitely were the better team and uh, deserved to win, but um, it just, it had a weird feeling to me. It, 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 it felt like a lot of players were off. Um, we had a few players that were playing great and then some players that, that were, not doing so well. Our, our defense, I thought our defense looked surprisingly good against Man United. Today, I think we saw a lot of what we were all worried about <laughs> what would happen against Man United. Um, I, I was uh, not very confident in the defense for most of the game. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the biggest standout to me, I mean, Trent's been amazing lately in both of the last two games. I think he's got something like five assists and a goal in his last seven games from right back. And he could have more when I mean, he's had a couple of really good chances to score. Um, a couple of goals could have gone in for assists. Um, but, um, you know, that Fabinho Thiago partnership in midfield is just, it, it, it's been great to watch the last couple of games. And, and this game today, especially Thiago, it was like everybody on the pitch just was recognizing at times that he's the best player on the pitch. So, you know, like, um, and there, we have other great players, but, um, it, it was it was just he was totally in control of that match at times and uh it's great to see because that's that's the player we bought that's a player we, we were hoping to get earlier in the season and you know because of covid and nearly breaking his leg and all the other things that happened for being not being in midfield we haven't been able to see it until recently but um i saw andrew beardsley uh post um tweeted that uh we're six six wins and one draw with fabinho and tiago in midfield now um, so that's something to look forward to next year, regardless of what happens in the next two games. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, uh, really good to know. Um, so many places. Um, I just, one last word on the game. Um, I thought it was interesting, um, that, uh, I did unfortunately watch the Tottenham Wolves game to kind of curse Harry Kane and hope he didn't score. Um, they could not stop talking about the possibility of him being in this elite club of three golden boots, I, I might have missed something, but when Salah scored to tie Harry Kane in the Golden Boot race, I didn't hear one person say, oh, that puts him in a league company, potentially, for winning three Golden Boots. Did, I mean, well, I'm missing something. He's not English, and he's a one-season wonder. Come on, Paul. You know yeah. that. Right, right. And, he, and he's a diver, too, along with Mane, right? They never get found. A, a, a one-season <laughs> wonder who is the, what, the first Liverpool player? Uh, to score 30 goals in three straight years in how long? Yeah. Yeah. In, yeah. in the Premier League era, I believe. Yeah. So, so in, 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 in all time, because I hate this Premier League stuff in terms of like, oh, in the Premier League, yeah. um, all time Liverpool, he's the third fastest 
Uh, he scored the third most goals in 200 appearances. Um, and yeah. and and the the crazy thing is, Mo probably only converts one out of every six chances that he creates. Mm-hmm. If if he was truly a clinical finisher, his numbers would be just palpably absurd, as opposed to simply absurd. Yeah, you know, I, 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 we talked about this before, but I am old enough to remember Ian Rush, and and Rush would would have games where he had five chances and maybe he'd put one or two away. But the team he played for was good enough not to concede. So it actually didn't matter. And I think a lot of what's happened, particularly this season with the 20 goals is we should have won a lot more matches with him scoring and not conceding in those those same games. Um, I very much was taken back actually, and you, you pointed this out today, Sean, um, about the, the absence of the CSI showing up for Harry Kane's goal. Um, yeah. or offside and I'm taken back to that Brighton game uh, where Salah's the goal was ruled out for offside and I'm still that's the one of all of the ridiculous decisions this season I struggle with the most yeah we, we've had we've had so many of those the officials and Harry Kane in one sentence just saying yeah, yeah. we've had so many of those the, the one that was the worst to me was the handball and for Firmino and the build-up remember that one where yeah. he was being manhandled and the ball happened to hit him in the hand. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, and then, and you, some of the calls, I mean, I, we don't need to get into it. I don't, I don't want to get you fired up, Paul, but, uh, you know, Mike Dean was, was like uh, trying to one up everybody today in terms of just, he was giving us absolutely nothing. And, and I mean, their first goal actually came off a totally garbage call. Thiago cleanly won the ball, you know, it, wasn't even close. If you look at the replay yeah. and Trent was up the sideline going off and they stopped, they stopped play and that turns into their first goal. Yeah. It's just, you know, it seemed like, and Klopp actually mentioned it in the post-match interview. He said, um, Mike Dean wasn't helping us at all today. He said, he, it seemed like we had the ball the entire match, but only West Brom was getting calls. Oh, wow. So, um, yeah. It was, certainly felt that way. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, and, and <clears throat> I didn't, it's, it's weird because, you know, like at this point as a Liverpool supporter, you almost just – you just like expect that now. You know, that these guys are going to get fouled and they're just never going to get a call, just the way the season's going. But anyway, I mean, like you said, Paul, they fought through it today like they did a lot of times last season. And, uh, you know, it was great to see because even up until the end, we didn't finish the chances, but we were still going for it and, and creating chances. Ginny had that great chance towards the end. I thought when he missed that, I thought that was it. But – we we still pulled it off so yeah i'll 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 actually add one thing just because i think that we missed it earlier uh but when we were talking about players that had good performances today um you know it could be his last meaningful contribution to the reds but i thought big shack was fantastic as soon as he came on he played with purpose uh he was great at moving the ball forward springing it out on passes um you know shakiri played a big role today uh, and it's much like he played a big role against Barcelona in 4 0 against Anfield. And I just think that his part of the tail kind of gets short shrift at times. Um, but Shakiri was exceptional today. Yeah. So uh, he got a big cheer when he came on at, at the pub. Uh, when, uh, and, Cold and, hero. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, so, so one of the one of our sometime presenters, Tim, actually had a Shakiri shirt on. Which probably inspired gonna, cheer. I was gonna say, do you guys have a large Swiss or Albanian presence at OLSC Delaware? I do not know what the origin of the the Shaq shirt was. Uh, I think it was just like, who's the most cultish right now? Probably. You know? uh, yeah, we'll see who that is next season. Um, we could pivot many ways. We're going to come back and talk about the Man United game later. And uh, my favorite assertion of the week from the NBC commentary team that um, when they turned debt over the uh, the call for the foul on Phillips. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about that later, where, where they, they claim that's what Barr was for. And I'm, I'm, I'm still dwelling on that. Let, we do want to go and talk a little bit about uh, uh, the official sports club of Philadelphia. Um, you, you're, you're not that far from us. But quite honestly, I don't know if we know that much. If you're, a, you're in Delaware, you know that much about the sports club in Philadelphia, how long it's been around. So um, I'll, I'll preface my first question, and, and Sean, if you've got some questions, that'd be awesome. With, the, I remember seeing uh, the Reds 
uh, at the 2001, which, which turns out was 20 years ago this week, uh, FA Cup final at the Black Horse in Philadelphia. Um, and uh, when Michael Owen scored those goals and we stole the match from Ars- Arsenal. So, so clearly there weren't that many Liverpool fans at that game. And I'm sure that's the only place in Philadelphia that was showing that game. Things yeah, I, I was really going to say the, years. the Black Horse these days is actually a United pub. I've, uh, I, I've been certain to go in there on many different occasions wearing my colors, yeah. uh, particularly over the last few years, ever since Sir Alex left. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the Black Horse is, is not a pub that we frequent. What a shame. <laughs> uh, the, the mic, I, I remember skipping up Broad Street after the game. So. Uh, so, so where are you now? And what's happened in those 20 years when I've not been paying attention? So OLSC Philadelphia has really come about organically. Um, you know, it started as a, a handful of people at a single pub on Front Street. Uh, and through some hard work, those people, you know, they, they really put a lot of effort into recruiting and building. Um, the 2017 season was the first official season for OLSC Philadelphia. Um, and it's morphed in a way that it's gone from um, just a handful of guys sitting in bar stools. Um, you know, watching not the best of red sides into um, for the final against Tottenham in Madrid uh, two years ago, we had over a thousand people across five different bars. Uh, we now have several hundred members of the OLSC, whether it be through basic or full membership. Um, and we call five different pubs home. Uh, we have the Victoria Free House in Old City, Philadelphia. We have the Cambridge on South Street in Philadelphia. Uh, we have the Iron Abbey, Union Jacks, and Kildares all out in the suburbs. Uh, and we also go to the Blockley as well. So I suppose there's six um, also out, or out, I guess it's the Ridley also out in the suburbs. So K- Kildares is out in Westchester, is it? Correct. Oh, you're Correct. surrounding us now. The 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 Abbey's in Horsham. Okay. Uh, Union Jacks, I believe, is out in Montgomery County as well. Uh, but yeah, we we've grown uh, quite a bit over the years. Yeah. Yeah. So West Jets is really close to us, by the way. Just in case that's a. Uh... Yeah, I, I I have a handful of friends from college who lived in Westchester and actually went to high school down in Delaware. Yeah. So I I knew that geographically they weren't that far apart. Yeah. 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 So, so um, I probably shouldn't say this, but I, I'm, you know, I, I, when um, we became an official member, which was after you, um, I think the, the club had trouble locating our pin on the map because um, I, I think they thought we were a lot further away from anywhere than, than we actually were. But um, yeah, hopefully uh, <clears throat> the people aren't listening and we can uh, carry on. Yeah, well, uh, well hope, hopefully there will be a, a fan fest at some point yeah. Uh, that was supposed to happen uh, pre-COVID, um, and everybody will get a chance to come see uh, what OLSC Philadelphia is all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That 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 we awesome. Actually, that week, I think the week before, we were supposed to have the Anfield Rap guys visiting us. Um, it it was it was set up so perfectly that Fan Fest was going to be Liverpool City, and the way that it worked out, obviously we had clinched the match before. Yeah. Uh, but one way or the other, either it was going to be a coronation yeah. or it was going to be an opportunity to win the league with thousands of red supporters, you know, right in downtown Philadelphia would have been an incredible experience. Yeah. Um, and hopefully at some point when the world is in a place where we can do things like that again, um, we'll have an opportunity to have a lot of fun together. Yeah. I had a friend from uh, North Carolina and D.C. Both were going to drive up. And we were all going to go to that together. We had it all planned. Um, along with Anfield Rat at, at Rooney's. Um, but, you know, hopefully we can do it again sometime relatively uh, soon. Hopefully uh, this yeah. upcoming season. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, at least there's going to be 10,000 fans back in the stadium um, next weekend, which. Uh, yeah, that, that I think that's going to make all the difference in the world. Um, yeah. You know, if, if, if we don't trip ourselves up against Burnley, you know, 10,000 supporters in Anfield against Palace is going to sound like 100,000. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 
Yeah, I had, I had a friend who was at the uh, the one of the games where they had the two thousand fans. He said it was uh, surprisingly loud. Uh, it, it's it's going to sound like a hundred thousand. There, there's no way around it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So Mo Salah clinches the golden boot. We get in top four. Just anyway, uh, just dreaming a little bit. Um, so. Uh, just, I, I, so what just if, will it into existence? Right, right, just right. will it into existence? Yeah, it's uh, so actually, I, I I must admit I did think Shakira was going to score the winning goal today because I felt like it was going to be a left field thing. I was not prepared for the left field thing that actually happened. Um, well, your your premonition on that part was you you were certainly prescient. Um, right. You just might not have been left field enough. Right. When when right. when when I think it was Mo teed up Genie for that late, I was like, that was it. I mean, you've seen it too many times before with Ginny. I, I was like, he's going to nail this when he missed. Uh, like, oh, man. If, 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 he, if he was wearing a Holland jersey, it would have been in the back of the net. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah it's, it's funny, actually. They mentioned that uh, they got Pereira, the guy from West Brom, is the first player midfielder to score more than t- 10 goals or more for a relegated team since Ginny Wijnaldum did it for wow. uh, yeah. Newcastle. Newcastle. Yeah. Yeah. So. So all home um, goals, I believe. So you what? So how did you? Bec- so so let's personalize this. How did you become a Liverpool supporter, Lou? So I personally became a Liverpool supporter. It was really just by fate. In college, I went to the University of Pennsylvania here in Philadelphia, yeah. uh, and I happened to have um, a fraternity brother who's from the UK and a huge Liverpool supporter. Uh, and the deal became: I will have the television for all Philadelphia sports and we will watch together. Uh, And you will have the television in the mornings uh, for Liverpool. And, you know, it drew me in. And I'll tell you what really hooked me uh, was the cop. Just the songs on the cop, uh, the whole sense of community. Um, And to this day, uh, this is now going on 15, 16 years. Uh, You know, James McNeil and I still text during every match. Uh, he drove down, he, he lives in New York now, uh, came down for the Champions League final against Madrid. Uh, so it's, it's just been a really, really cool journey uh, that I kind of lucked into uh, just by virtue of living with someone in college um, and just the, the cop drawing me in. Um, you know, if, if there was something that I could ever ask to be injected into my veins, uh-huh. Uh, it, it, it's really just that aura that's yeah. on the cop on a you know frigid Saturday uh, on a rainy day in in Northern England. Uh-huh. Wow, um, it, I, w- I was ch- just I was chatting to um, a, someone who contributes occasionally to our podcast, Charlie. Today, and he was at the United game um, at the beginning of last year, uh, where Salah scored that goal. Like. I'm really happy about Salah scoring those breakaway goals against United in the last minute. I could live with that for a long time. Just, just, just what an emotional release right, that right. goal was. More more than any other. I, I know when I, I saw the agenda that you had circulated, uh, you know, one of the topics was your favorite moment as, or, or your favorite uh, memory as a Red. Yeah. Uh, and for me, you know, you focus on moments, right? Yep. There's, uh, you know, the, the Lovren goal against Dortmund. Um, yep. there's the, the corner taken quickly. The Mo goal against United last year was one of those moments. Yeah. Um, and then the, the cop finally decides to break out, you know, mm-hmm. now you're going to oh, believe us, yeah, yeah. you know, we will not be moved. It was just, it, it was spine tingling stuff that if you're not a football supporter, uh, you know, you'll struggle to understand it, but you'll know that something significant has happened yeah. because you can just sense it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I f- f- just as an aside, my, uh, my, my daughter's finally uh, given into my uh, intense sort of pressure about being a fanatic. And today, <laughs> today she told me she jumped on the sofa when Allison scored. And it, it's like, oh, that's her first moment um, <laughs> in her Barcelona. Cool. Sanetti. You'll always you'll always remember your first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is not a moment that any of us are going to forget for quite some time. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's that's awesome. So, um, I, sh- I wish I asked you this before we start recording. Have you made it to Anfield yet? So I was fortunate enough to, in October of 2018, 
when the Philadelphia Eagles played the Jaguars at Wembley Stadium. Okay. Uh, we went over as, uh, you know, my father, my brothers, my now wife. Yeah. Um, we, made a fam- we made a family trip out of it. You know, we did uh, four days in London, four days in Edinburgh, back to London for another few days. Uh, and the day before the Eagles game happened to be a Liverpool-Cardiff match up, uh, up at Anfield. And I was able to get tickets through the OLSC. Uh, wow. And I sat three rows up in the cop. Mm-hmm. for 45 quid a piece. Uh, I'm someone who is a 20 year Eagle season ticket holder. I was at game five of the world series when the Phillies won in 2008. Um, that was the best moment of my sporting life. Just a, a regular season match that for most people would just be a throwaway against a team that was later relegated, uh-huh. uh, you know, to be able to sit on the cop uh, and just hear the noise and see the pitch and be part of something that, I've watched from afar for so long uh, and just, you know, always wanted to have the, the true experience and be a real part of it. Uh, and I, I have to say, um, you know, the supporters there, there's always the dichotomy, right? Where some people, I don't want to say they take issue with, um, but there's the, the international fans that come over. Yeah. Um, and we felt nothing but welcome. And I think a lot of people understand um, you know, they bring people into this, you know, the, the supporters are part of the appeal here. Uh, and the fact that people are willing to go from all over the world um, to a, in a, a post-industrial city in Northern England, uh, it's not like it's Paris, it's Liverpool. It's a lot like Philadelphia. It's mm-hmm. part of the attraction. Uh-huh. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I was fortunate enough to get to go to Anfield, take the two hour and 12 minute train from Houston station to Liverpool Lime and had one of the best days of my life, uh, aside from, you know, wedding day and, and birth of my son. Um, you know, that was top five moment, uh, without a doubt. Yeah. That's, that's, oh, so many, that's, that's, that's awesome. Actually. That's a, that's a really, really great story. I, I, a couple of things I did want to share and I, I may have said this before, uh, Sean, correct me, if, tell me if I did, but the last game I saw at Anfield was us beating Watford. 2-0. Um, if you're, it, it was a completely unmemorable game um, for anyone who goes to the game a lot. It was the end of 2019. I think Watford probably should have scored against us a couple of times. Salah scored a couple of goals anyway. We uh, we won the game. Um, uh, we probably shouldn't have won the game, but we did. It was a 12.30 kickoff and I was sat in the Kenny L. Reach stand, which I often do when I go back. Um, with someone who goes to every game and they're like, oh, ho-hum, uh, you know, guess we good we glad we won. Let's go get a beer. Two guys from a supporters club who had never been to England, never mind, to Anfield before, like showed up like 10 minutes later at the pub we arranged to meet at. I'm like, oh my God, that was the greatest experience of my life, they said. And I was well, like, and And, and, it, wow. and it's funny because I, I kind of had the inverse experience yeah. the next day mm-hmm. because at the Eagles-Jaguars game, yeah. there were probably... 50,000 Eagles fans that made their way to London. I don't know if 50,000 made it into the stadium, but there were 50,000 Eagles fans in London for sure. Yeah. And we're sitting in our seats. We're, we're in the end zone. And there was a group of fellas from Wales. Uh, and I'll, I'll never forget someone who introduced himself as Rob the Knob. Rob the Knob from Wales. Okay. And they have their Philly Eagles Welsh supporters group for... Uh, they came down for the game and all they wanted to do was watch the Eagles game with true Eagles fans from Philadelphia. So it it was kind of both sides of the coin that weekend where, you know, I got to immerse myself in the experience I've always wanted. Uh, But I was also able to kind of help a couple of random guys from Wales uh, perhaps have their experience like that. Wow. That's, that's great. That's great. That was a hell of a trip. Yeah. I feel like um, we should end it there. But I do want to talk about the Man United game. And I do want to, so at least one round on that and then one circle on um, looking ahead. Uh, hope you've got time for this, Lou. Uh, I, I've got about five minutes and then the little guy gets his bottle. So okay. um, if, I, if I have to drop off, don't worry. 
I'd love to come back and do this with you guys again. Oh, it's been a blast. That, that'll Absolutely, be awesome. yeah. That'll be awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, mm -hmm. and I, 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 it'd be worthwhile having like a conversation about all sorts of like supporters club stuff independently. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, so let me. If you've only got five minutes, let's let's at least reflect on our great win at the <laughs> Theater of Dreams. Uh, <laughs> the most annoying thing on all our White's commentary, and there's a lot of competition, is when he keeps referring to Old Trafford as the Theater of Dreams. Because he really should be coming to Anfield saying, "Oh, Liverpool playing. This means more, shouldn't he?" He should, but you know, the, look, I'm I'm not one that likes to buy into announcer or official bias. Mm -hmm. uh, but if this year has proven anything, there certainly is a bias against the greatest club in the world. That's all I'll have to say. But in terms of that, United, yeah. and I, I, I said it earlier, Jurgen Klopp went to Old Trafford and won with Reese Williams and Nat Phillips at the back. Someone who played in the sixth division and on loan at uh, the Zwei Bundesliga at Stuttgart last year. Mm -hmm. um, and especially just after the circumstances of what United did last week, I understand that they earned the right to put whatever side on the pitch they wanted by already qualifying for Europe. And we can't complain about that. Uh, but to technically still mathematically be alive for the title against Leicester and trot out a side with 10 changes, I think they had three or four uh, players making their Premier League debut, perhaps their professional debut, um, to just wave the white flag on the league when statistically it was still, uh, you know, possible, especially after the uh, Premier League continued to delay our match against United, if for no other reason than for the farce of a continuing title race uh, and Sky's money, uh, to make those 10 changes and then put their full side out against us uh, that was a, a sweet sweet victory and personally um, you know in, in a season that's been very you know la languishing uh, and I think has just been really draining for all of us um, to have it saved one on a Jorginho back pass where Arsenal was able to you know exploit it and give us that little bit of a wedge in the door uh, right. to go to Old Trafford um, <laughs> You know, it's, it's just everything's been flipped on its head in yeah. a short amount of time. And, you know, in the context, this season could feel we could end feeling very positively um, and looking forward toward next year. Yeah. Um, you know, finishing on a positive note, qualifying for the Champions League. Um, you know, that's a real springboard because when we get our players back, the rest of the league is certainly on notice. Um, I'm, I'm certainly not pleased with everything that I've heard about how incredible this city team is. What's this city team going to end with? 89 points? Yep. yep. We, had, right. we, yeah. we, we had 99 last year under the most difficult circumstances probably any club has ever faced while trying to win the, the first division, Premier League, whatever you want to call it in England, between a pandemic, uh, the season being interrupted, uh, clubs like West Ham, trying to have it null and void, uh, yeah. you know, 99 points. Uh, and I have to listen now about this incredible city side. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the rest of the league should certainly be on notice. Uh, and assuming that we're able to take six from six, um, you know, I, I think this can be a massive springboard uh, going that way. Yeah, yeah. No, I think we're in uh, really good. So, so we could divert a lot into, um, you know, kind of, uh, petro dollars and and funding of teams that should be should I mean, so yeah we we so we've done a rant about that before now um looks like you need to leave i have to put the little guy to bed but i uh look i appreciate the invite hey and I, was, i'd love to do this again it's great to have you on oh well, well definitely definitely yeah yeah actually we are doing a wrap-up next week so we might, i'll reach out to you about that let but, me know paul okay. and sean it was a pleasure okay. you too okay. thanks Luke. thanks so much have yeah. a good one, guys. So, Sean, um, we'll go a bit back and forth on. So, so I did want to talk actually about uh, the Arlo White and Lee Dixon and the penalty at Old Trafford. For some reason, this really got up my nose. It, like that looked like that's a red card challenge in today's world, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I I watched 
the vast majority of that match on mute, thankfully. Um, not because, yeah, I, I probably would have listened to the commentary reluctantly normally, but I, I had a lot of other stuff going on um, and I uh, was trying to do a couple of things at once. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I thought there were a couple penalty shouts in that match that, you know, have certainly been given against us this season. And, and that one is, you know, at the time, I thought it was a I thought it was a foul and could have been a penalty, but I didn't feel as strongly as I did um, until you know after the match, like sort of reading about why like they, apparently how they justified not giving it mm -hmm. is is not not aligned with the rules. Like apparently they they didn't give it because they said he got the ball first. It had something to do with them getting the ball first. That yeah. has nothing to do with the rules anymore. The rules have changed, by right? and, and it's and it's a foul. I mean, the other thing I heard after the match, which which made a lot of sense to me, and it kind of had me convinced. I mean, I think at the time I was like, just not trying to get myself into that mentality of like, oh, we need a penalty, you know. But um, anywhere else on the pitch, that's a card. Yeah. Forget a foul. That's a card. Mm -hmm. And so why isn't it there? Um, that was that was a strange one. I thought, and this didn't get very much. They didn't review this or talk about this at all, but I think in the second or third minute, Firmino squares the ball for Jada. He's wide open. I mean, that's a goal. Yeah. And Bae slides, and on the replay, they didn't. I don't think they even reviewed it, but they said they did. And he they, slides, they, and when you watch in a replay, yeah. he it looks like he intentionally hits the ball. I mean, he throws his hand down. It's not like natural. He slided with his hand up in the air. And then he throws his hand down and, and hits the ball. Yeah. And um, we've had much worse you right. know, given against us in the last couple of years. I, I'm, I'm just, you know. So we're going to angrily agree because yeah. his, his hand was away from his body, right? It's like, yeah. what what do you, yeah, yeah. So um, so it, it made me laugh, actually, that Tuchel was complaining about the handball and I didn't see the game. So I don't know, but he's complaining about the thing. And I saw that, I saw the brief glimpse of the, oh, yeah, that he was that playing with handball. It was like, uh, really, I'm not sure about that. Whereas the Bayi one was like his arms out. You know, there's no question he's, yeah. And sometimes, you know, sometimes you do second guess yourself. Like, are you being biased just because you're a Liverpool supporter? Oh, I am. I am. I am. But yeah. no, and, and I am too. Yeah. But like, I don't. I mean, I look at some of the things other teams complain about, and then I look at some of the stuff that we've we've had, especially this year. And I'm like, really? I mean, you said this Harry Kane goal today. We've had a dozen goals right. like that given against. You know, where they, they they at least spent like five minutes analyzing it. They didn't spend any time even looking at it. Yeah, it was. It's just. Yeah. I don't, you know, we don't need to go off about that whole system again because. Well, I'll finish it off, and then we'll maybe just do a quick conversation about what next. But uh, but the the one thing I did want to reiterate was Arlo White said when it was the penalty was turned like they turned over the call. That's what VAR is all about, and I was thinking. Oh, is that denying Liverpool goals? Because it feels like that's what a VAR is all about. Yeah, I mean, I just want to say the one. I just want to say I thought the Man United performance from the team was just it was like vintage Klopp Liverpool from the first few years to me. Like it was basketball. We you know we gave up a lot of chances, but I think overall Nat and Reese played really well in that game. Agreed. Um, I, I can't I can't say anybody didn't play very. I mean, we started off a little slow, but. Overall, I mean, Bobby looked like the old Bobby. Jota was awesome for most of the match. Um, it was just a joy to watch. I, I, I mean, it was close there in the second half for a bit. You got a little nervous, but that's the most confident I felt about a match for months. I mean, it, it, we just – we looked like we had it almost the whole way. Yeah. And even when we – we had other chances. I mean, we could easily could have scored six in that match, um, regardless of the penalties. And – so that was, yeah, that that match just, and it had me so optimistic going into today. Yeah. And then we, we, I, I, I feel like we, we, we definitely deserve to win today. I'm not saying we didn't, but I was surprised that um, we, we didn't come out looking more like we did against Man United. You know, we, we yeah. So a couple of things I'd say actually is that United tried to play more open against us, which they haven't always under Solskjaer. Yeah. Um, and, and West Brom didn't. For most times today, they had six at the back, um, which, yeah. The thing I'd say about the United game, though, is, because I, I kept reading this about, like, oh, United were on top for half an hour, and then they had 15 minutes in the second half. So being a bit anal and having a lot of time on my hands on Friday night, I watched the game back with my stopwatch, 
and they may have had five minutes on top in the first half yeah. and they may have had 10 minutes in the second half. It, at best, it was even. For the most part, we were the more likely to score at any moment in that game. Yeah, it was. I, I thought the first 10 minutes, they were looked, they had a couple of good chances. Ali gave the ball away. Um, then it looked relatively even until about 25 or 30. And then I thought from about 30 minutes until 75 minutes, we just absolutely blasted them. Yeah. I mean, we could have scored six goals in that period of time. Sure, cool. and, um, yeah. The other thing I wanted to say, because I know we want to wrap up, um, is Paul Pogba was an absolute crash in that game. And I never want to hear anything about him being in any conversation for being a great midfielder ever. I mean, I think he's very talented. Yeah. He's wasting his career there. I mean, that he that he was horrible. Yeah. He, was, he ended up on his behind. Because I, I don't want to say what I what I want to say, but um, he he was he was on his behind for three of their goals. Yeah. yeah. And um, including the last goal, well, he was supposed to be marking Bobby for the header. Yeah. Um, he was just terrible. I mean, and and Trent had a field day. He was supposed to be marking Trent, and you know, that obviously didn't work. So can I, uh, can I share with you what my 15-year-old daughter said? <laughs> Watching the game, she's like, Pogba, wasn't he supposed to be the next big thing? It, I mean, it's just, I mean, if you watch highlights of him when he was at you, you know, back in Italy and Juventus, you know, he was he was amazing. He was a great player. Mm -hmm. Um, and they've just ruined him at United. I mean, I, you know. Um, he, he won the World Cup, yeah. so, you know, fair play there, but... Um, well, I, yeah. I mean, I, I think that the, the coach that thinks he can be a defensive midfielder, which I think he was supposed to be at some point. Yeah. My friend in Liverpool thought he was trying to play left-back, auxiliary left-back, and, and his comment was, like, at least Mourinho actually played a couple of left-backs in the same, you know, in like to defend, as opposed to having a left-back and Pogba. I could be wrong about this. I mean, I, I'm not, you know an expert on, on when he played in Italy, but I think he was supposed to play the same type of role that Thiago played is playing for us, with like yeah. alongside a proper defensive midfielder. And um, I don't know why United haven't built the team around him. I'm happy they haven't. Um, but at this point, I don't, you know, he's just sort of lingering there. But, um, and I also, the other thing, I also thought um, they could, if they had started Greenwood, I think it could have been a more even match. I think Cavani sort of played into our hands because, you know, he, he basically played into the strengths of Nat and Reese being big and, and good in the air. And Cavani's a great player, but he's he's never been fast and he's slower than he used to be because he's getting old. Um, and I think I think that played into our hands a little bit, but um, I'm not sure it would have mattered on the day. Um, so yeah, it was. I mean that that was. That was my favorite match of the year by far. And it's, it's, uh, it was just awesome to see again. It was great to see us play like that because it feels like it's been over a year since I've seen us play like that, you know? Um, so I, I do wonder whether the crowds coming back has like had an impact on their thinking about this as opposed to thinking like, oh, another of these training ground games, like, yeah, it's going to be back soon, you know, oh, and it, it, it's not that far away. Um, I'm going to close on one thing. When, let's let's look at um, we can look really far ahead. We've got two games ahead. Um, Burnley will have fans. Uh, Palace. We would have expected, I think, to have been on the beach next week, but they they beat Villa today. I mean, I didn't see the game, but it's like okay. Um, what are your expectations for the next week? I'm more nervous about the Burnley game than I am about next week. And I, I kind of agree um, that uh, I think I, I expect the 10,000 fans to really help push us. Um, the, yeah, the Burnley game um, is the one for me because, you know, I would expect them to play a low block, similar to what um, West Brom did today, play a low block and um, yeah. Yeah. try to hit us that way. But um I don't know. I, I get, part of me feels like today it's like you know maybe maybe we we finally got some luck kind of going on our side here. Not not that it was lucky necessarily, but you know we we come out we blast United at Old Trafford, which we never do, you know. And in the form we've been, we do it this year. Um, and then today, the way today's game ended, um, maybe maybe it's just it's just going our way finally after all this garbage all year you know maybe we finally get some things going our way and uh 
you know, maybe we get a lucky bounce or we just come out and we score a couple early against Burnley. And, um, but that's, that's my, you know, I, I think if we can get past Burnley, especially if we can get a couple early on them, um, yeah. I, I'll feel, I'll feel pretty good. I'm also keeping an eye on, you know, on that closely on that Tuesday match, right. Hoping that Lester win, because that makes it, you know, there's a couple of different ways it could go, but that makes it a little bit easier on us. Um, yeah. You know, it, because at that point, Chelsea, the best they can do is 67 points. So that means we're, we're in if we win for sure. So it is funny. I keep looking at that and like for the longest time, it's like, oh, they got to play each other. And now I'm like, yeah, but someone's going to get points. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> uh, whereas yeah. if they play somebody else, they might not. Anyway, so we should probably wrap this up. Um, next week, we have a special, uh, hopefully edition. Uh, we're going to have a like a lot of people are, we're going to reflect on the season. Uh, no idea how that chaos is going to work, but we'll try and figure it out. Um, otherwise, uh, Young Reds are in the FA Cup, FA Youth Cup final again. Um, the big team are in with a chance of being in the Champions League, and we'll have fans back next season. Wow, a lot of things to be positive about. But most of all, Alison Becker. Goal scoring hero, who would have believed it? <laughs>